Okay, so um, I'm glad to be, to be here, and it's interesting that um, the organization started to align uh, a number of um, a number of talks that uh, all are all around the similar topics. Uh, mine, the quantiles and the percentiles, uh, can definitely be applied to monitoring and SLAs. Um, and even the next one with business metrics, uh, it's also something that uh, that is very very interesting. Um, so jumping to uh, directly to, uh, to to the subject, um, one of the things that uh, we uh, to, to give a context on FeedZi and how what FeedZi does and how does it relate to monitoring is that uh, for the ones that don't know, uh, we do uh, real time uh, fraud detection uh, using machine learning, um, and it has been uh, a business that mostly uh, has been on premise for customers uh, like big banks uh, and card processors and so on um, that would take our software and deploy on their data centers um, and then they would be responsible for the operation. And up to two years ago, we had zero infrastructure in the cloud. We um, had all of the deployments um, in, in these uh, large data centers uh, of big banks uh, in the US, in, uh, in Europe, uh, in India, and so on. And everything was, re was responsibility of the, the customers. Uh, fast forward for uh, this year, uh, we have, uh, I'll call it a, a large infrastructure in the, in the cloud, and it's growing 400% year over year in terms of volume of, of servers. For uh, just a, a reference, um, it's, it's about uh, 12,000 servers plus managed services like RDS, DynamoDB, and so on, and even some of the serverless uh, in, in AWS. And right now, this is a full uh, responsibility of, of FeedZi. Um, and uh, just to give you um, a little bit more, more detail, how this works on premise and how this uh, now works on the, on the cloud. So previously on premise, and we still have that model, uh, we have our 24 team, 24-7 uh, team, our L1 team that guarantees that these uh, problems that exist on premise uh, are escalated to our, uh, to our teams. And then directly our development team, which we would call uh, the L2 team, which was on, on call and worked with the customers to solve the problems. Now with uh, the cloud-based model, um, we have an extra team, which is our operations team. It, all, it uh, manages the infrastructure. It provides automation to the, to the teams builds monitoring, uh, builds infrastructure, and it's also, uh, in, in fact, the first level of support, and then it goes to the, to the, um, to the developers. One of the things that we uh, started to understand is uh, operations team uh, had some lack of uh, knowledge uh, on the software that was being deployed, very similar to what we've seen uh, on-premise. Uh, the operations teams of the customers really didn't understand much of our software. Um, and then made some uh, incorrect usage of, of the software. Um, and on the development team side, we have uh, exactly the opposite, which is uh, lack of knowledge on how the software is used um, and reduced visibility on how things work in, uh, in production. Even with our cloud-based uh, approach, we have some of, these, uh, some of these challenges. And in fact, this is the inheritance of five years of operating in an in a on-prem model. So what, we have, what have we learned with, with this and, and to start and, and, and make the context for, uh, for this talk is that the same way that a mechanic that knows completely uh, how a car is built uh, is not probably the best uh, or doesn't mean that it's the best racing driver, um, the, same, the same thing happens with the developers and the, and the, and the software. Just because you have developed your software, it doesn't mean that you know how to operate it. Because things will get used in a different way. Uh, you will see different things in production. And that's, um, in fact, uh, one of the, the main takeaways. So today I'm going to focus on monitoring and how we have transitioned or made an initiative where we had already this significant infrastructure. And over the last five months right now, um, we have revamped completely our monitoring infrastructure. Um, and of course, one of the main topics when you are on a service in the cloud is that you need to make sure um, that it's available, uh, that you detect problems, uh, and especially if you are 
on platforms uh, that are uh, real time and uh, dealing with customers um, that have really great expectations. So, and why is this challenging? Um, I also wanted to give this this context on the type of systems that we that we work uh, and and the impact that it has on 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 monitoring. One of the things is uh, the complexity that we are putting in these systems. Uh, first is we do this in real time, so we are focusing on uh, low latency systems. So if the system uh, is is kind of delayed or has some hiccups one or two seconds, you have a customer calling you say, you are breaching SLAs. Uh, this, this is not uh, meeting the, the, the latencies that you, that you promised. Then to make sure that we achieve these uh, low latency services, we rely a lot on uh, state-based processing and a lot of state in, in memory. And this is uh, basically very prone to accumulate errors. You cannot very quickly uh, reboot systems and, and, and get them uh, cleaned up again. And also the multi-tenancy um, combined with the, with the statefulness of the, of the system, uh, it creates you uh, like almost a perfect storm for you need to really know what's happening in the system. It's just not stateless uh, servers and a few databases. Uh, it's, there is a lot of complexity there. Another thing is, that is specific to us is that we focused, we focused on customers, um, on, on some of the top customers in the world in, in all of these areas. So the major banks, uh, the major uh, processing cards, and not the, the low, low, low tier ones, the smallest ones. And this creates an expectation of we need to, to provide a lot of customization and flexibility to make sure we adapt our uh, platform to the risk model management of, uh, of the customers. And by the end, and because of the same reason, uh, aggr very aggressive SLAs, um, even that you, uh, that you have an SLA, for example, 99.95 uh, or, or bigger, the customers expect 100%. Uh, the, the, the SLA is just for defining penalties because the customer will expect 100%. It doesn't mean that is easily achievable, um, but that's the, the expectation. And going to the cloud, especially with banks, that they think that this new thing will, it just changes drastically how, uh, how, we, how we work. They expect flexibility, speed, uh, performance, and stability. But going a little bit more on the, on the challenge of, uh, of monitoring, in short, what's the problem? Too many alerts, in some cases, too little alerts, because we might not face some of the, the challenges. This creates an effect of the team starting to ignore uh, alerts. If you start getting uh, on your mobile uh, alerts uh, popping up uh, every five minutes or sometimes 10 or 20 uh, during the night, and not all of them are problems, you will start ignoring it and say, there'll be someone that will check if it's an error and, and wake me up. And in the end, you don't get the, 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 the problems prevented. Just to give an example. Um, this is what this is a production uh, chart uh, of of the CPU of one of the machines, and uh, basically, of course, we even uh, define it. So this is in percentage, not in uh, number of. So it's uh, attached to the the ratio of CPUs. And you are we are seeing here basically uh, that every day we are reaching 100% of the CPU. And then if you know the monitoring platforms, it's kind of hard that you go there and say. Just between midnight and, uh, and midnight and 30 minutes, don't alert me if the CPU is 100%. <laughs> so it starts creating uh, a problem where just focusing on one single, uh, one single metric, you, can, you might not be able to alert, and you need to combine them. Another example is, and this is mostly related with the expectations of the customers. Um, in fact, these are, the, the title says uh, 400s and 500s. But uh, all of them, in this case, the green are 400s, which basically means it's not a problem of the server. Uh, it's either uh, a pro it's a problem in general of the customer. But what happens when you have big customers that have their processes uh, and their businesses on top of us is if they are messing up, we need to alert them. They have that expectation. And then it's very challenging to start understanding when we need to alert or, or not, because you are open to the to the 
to the world. Uh, so you might be re receiving requests that come from uh, from your customers, or might have requests that are just attacks, and you need to to find ways to to tune it. So when should we? Where should we adjust the, the thresholds? That's uh, a very common thing to um, to focus. So. I'm now going to uh, basically go through what we have gone. Um, and this is, uh, first I started, I wanted to go into more technical details uh, on how we implemented some of these things. Uh, but after discussing with, uh, with Manuel and, and Sergio, uh, just the process that we took to try to do this really uh, right um, is going to be the topic and not really going into, into the details of which metrics and what thresholds we, we, we did. Just to give you an, an overview of what we have right now, and in fact, is exactly what we had one year ago, um, is we have the applications on the left side, um, DynamoDB, Aurora, Zookeepers, uh, a number of FeedSize services, and uh, RabbitMQs, and so on. So those are the applications. Uh, the, the part in the, in the middle is what's part of the monitoring stack. So for the services, we have CloudWatch. For our internal um, applications, we leverage a lot drop, drop wizard. Uh, we now leverage drop wizard metrics. Um, we even develop our own framework to make it consistent uh, across our, our applications. Uh, Telegraph uh, to basically collect and send to InfluxDB. Uh, then Grafana to uh, visualization and generating alerts. And OptGenie for, for generating notifications. One of the things that it's, in fact, one of the key takeaways is that we haven't changed one single piece of the, the stack. And we changed dramatically um, our ability to detect problems and react to the, to the problems. So in fact, this is one of the key takeaways. Is, is not re sometimes it's not, or most of the time, it's not really about the, the stack that you use. And just by completely. Now I'm going to start to use this because since I use this, it's very cool. It's not going to fix it, fix it because we did it first. And it was, a, let's say, a modern stack. And we also made some, some mistakes. So I'm now going to talk about what we haven't done be in the beginning. And meanwhile, we have done in the, in the past five months. So there are four steps that I try to abstract. One is doing ma making changes on the teams. We had talked about the division between operations and, and uh, development and support. Second is the planning part. Uh, third, execute and uh, refine the, the, the metrics. Of course, this is not, was not a, a pure waterfall approach, um, but just to, to, to go through the main, uh, the main areas. Um, so the first was what changes we did on the teams. First is let's bring everyone together. That's the common sense. If we are getting problems of silos, let's just bring everyone together. And one thing is what we need to fix it. Another thing is how will we change this moving forward. Um, and what we did was we basically brought everyone together uh, from support, from operations, from development, and created a task force that to, to bring us to the what we thought it was uh, a good state, um, they would work together and not have being in, in separated teams. And then basically changing the responsibilities moving forward. One of the problems was that monitoring was 100% um, responsibility of operations. Right now, uh, after this initiative, uh, we are basically making sure that's part of the deliverables of the, uh, of the development team. Of course, it won't be 100% used on premise, but on the on our cloud platform, uh, it's their their responsibility. Second, and potentially the most uh, undervalued part is the planning. We are a bit um, we are a bit conservative on how much do we plan. I can tell you that basically uh, we have focused, or we probably spent about two weeks. By the way, there is one of the engineers here that worked. Uh, on this, uh, which is uh, Luis. We probably took about two weeks um, on planning this initiative and really going into the nitty gritty details on which problems were not we detecting, which problems were we alerting more. Uh, this led to, uh, just by curiosity, I, I have 
uh, exported our Confluence page. And I really got uh, surprised that with the comments and so on, it, it was already in uh, about 70 pages. But this was work of about two weeks. And we really went and planned in phases what's more critical, what's less critical. We really want to nail this uh, for, uh, for good. Don't fall on the same mistakes was definitely one of the, the key things. Uh, review every incident, every post-mortem. Uh, listen to the people that were doing L3 and L2 and, uh, and, and, and reviewing the alerts. Um, and one of the parts was also, let's start structuring uh, what monitoring looks like for us. Because everyone thinks it's, OK, we measure some things, we alert uh, others. Um, but let's make sure we know how do we organize our monitoring? Because once you start having a really big platform and you have a lot of stakeholders, you need to understand what are you measuring. And basically, we have split this in three main buckets. One is platform uh, metrics, what everyone knows that you need to do. Uh, monitor your CPU, your disk usage, uh, basic IO and network. Um, in, in fact, they have, it's what we had better at the time. And that's why we had so many false uh, positives alerts triggering that were not really uh, problems. So you have a low probability of predicting problems. But in fact, if really you are going to crash completely, uh, you need to have those uh, there. And you basically can automate this, everything, have this in every single server. Uh, you need to make sure they are, they are there, but are really not the most relevant <laughs> when you want to prevent problems. In general, if this alert, you're already facing an issue, um, and you cannot uh, prevent them. Application metrics, that's in fact probably what we have invested more in and the most relevant is metrics that show the healthiness of your application. And each application will have different uh, metrics. They need to be exported by your application. So if you think about uh, Cassandra or a RabbitMQ or uh, this type of, of applications, they all export some information that's many of the times just the developers go there and ask what's, uh, how, what's the value of, of this metric, what's the value of that, and they do some debugging based on that. You basically need to have all of that available and start using those analogies that the developers do of if this metric is getting, um, for example, the number of pending messages in RabbitMQ. This is something that it's, it has been always there, is available. It doesn't mean that you have a problem, but at some point it might indicate that you might have a, a problem upstream because no one is consuming those messages. Or throttling events in DynamoDB, which basically means that uh, you have a reserved capacity, you are trying to get uh, to use more, and Amazon allows you to use more of that capacity. But it means that probably if you are getting a lot of these throttle events, you need to resize your system or you will, you will have impact. So this is where you, we really spent a lot of time, especially in our applications. And we have to identify what were the main, let's say, processes that were running inside of the applications. Um, what are the critical things and, that you need to monitor? And uh, basically, how, how did we prevent looking at the past? Um, what were the things that we said, oh, if we had an alert here, or if we were able to see that this was happening, we, we would alert. So these are where we see the more predictive, um, the pr more predictive uh, ability. And it's where you can be more proactive on the, on the monitoring. Last one is business metrics. And uh, I'll let to the, next, to the speaker of the next session probably to go there. But it's metrics that are mostly visible by the customers. Sometimes they don't even have um, a direct relationship of the healthiness of the system. For example, for us, um, some of the business metrics relate with uh, how much fraud are we catching. So the system can be working flawlessly, but in fact, we are not catching any fraud. Um, so from an operational perspective, everything is right. But from a company perspective, you are basically not providing the service that you, that you were expecting. And once again, those are, uh, they might be collected in very different ways, especially on the databases and you need to collect data or in the boundaries of your system. Uh, near the Apache servers if they are really the limits or the, your web application firewalls. But those, once again, uh, they, in fact, these ones are uh, lagging indicators. When you start to see this alerting, the problem already happened and 
potentially already happened uh, a few hours ago or, or so. So, but they are still very important to make sure we uh, we know exactly what's important for the customer and not be completely um, completely uh, unaware that the system might be completely healthy from a performance and availability and errors perspective, but you are not responding correctly to your uh, to your to your customers. And last one, and this once again might be obvious, <coughs> but sometimes it's it's not. Which we wanted. This was already a production system. We had a lot of um, traffic going in, um, hundreds of servers there. So we couldn't just go there, replace it, and say we are perfect. This will now be uh, be be perfect. So we had set up a system where uh, we basically. Um, Rebuild complete the dashboards uh, in tandem with the existing ones. The alerts, we define uh, flags to say these are from the new monitoring system. And we customized how the notifications were made so that the, the, the engineers first um, wouldn't receive any alerts. And just the team that was working on this would receive the alerts. Then we started rolling out uh, to a few engineers of each team, um, refine this, and we basically focused, we will only open this once we get down to a maximum of 10 alerts um, that were potent, that might not be really issues, and that might be a little bit aggressive, 10 fast positives um, a day. And this was probably an improvement of four to 500 uh, percent in some of the, the deployments that we, that we had. And basically, this was just reviewing um, initially every day, then every two or three days, then uh, after, after a week. And make sure once we get there, and that we are not um, basically uh, overwhelming people with alerts, but also look at the old system and the problems that were being alerted. They should be alerted with this one. That's that's also something that you cannot replace a system without having those those guarantees. And basically, we got to a to a stage where even on the first deployments that we had in with all our alerts, we found out that there were problems that were were com being completely missed. Um, problems that were not creating, let's say, the downtime or so, but they were degrading the system, and that we were able to ask the teams to fix it. And basically, we have um, basically got the, 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 the alerts down, and the team right now, in terms of alerts, it's, it's uh, down, and we are almost reaching this, this, uh, this target. But even from a monitoring perspective, um, and not the alerts, just the information that we had, uh, I, I really was really uh, pleased yesterday. Uh, yes, it was yesterday we were uh, crunching through the, the weekend. And there was a, one of our engineers that was doing maintenance on one of the servers, our application servers. And I was just looking at a bunch of graphics from the monitoring, and I knew exactly what he was doing. Um, and basically, he was, he was doing processes of the application, uh, changing things on the application, just the level of monitoring that we brought up really uh, was being shown there um, just by the monitoring that we have implemented. And that basically got me to a stage that if I can understand what's happening without the system saying to the, to the monitoring platform and just by charts and, uh, and the things that we have provided, um, it really means that we are being able to show to the monitoring platform, what's happening? It's we are being more transparent, and that was really uh, one of the, um, the, the 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 let's say the the big moments that I, that I had when I was looking at this uh, this new uh, this new system. So just to wrap up, uh, as I mentioned in, initially, it's not about the tools; it's how you use them and how you are very uh, systematic on using on using them. Um, Monitoring requires knowledge on the software. Um, you really need to understand that it's not just, even on open source tools, it's not just read a few of the posts and say, yeah, these guys, uh, and we did that in the, in the beginning, for, for sure, even knowing that we have operated this. Just go to Datadog, for example. We have very good, uh, very good um, tutorials of how to monitor. Postgres, how to monitor all of these services. The problem is they are doing it in a generic way. They don't know how to use your platform. So you really, the, the, your platform, your application, and what are the things that you really need to alert. 
and uh, that is, is really important. The third one is planning and not just start doing it. Um, it really helps, if, especially if you have already a number of systems in place, which probably is the majority of the, 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 situa the situations. Um, it it's really helps with you to be more systematic, to make sure you don't fall uh, on, on the cracks of uh, missing some of these things. And it's, it's really, really, really important. And thank you for uh, your time. Um, we have some um, posts in our, in our uh, tech blog uh, that cover different topics. Uh, I think there was one that uh, focused now on availability and also related with this. Um, that it's also really important in how we deal, deal with uh, having very uh, high available systems. OK, guys, thank you. Huh? Any questions? Uh, you have many customers, uh -huh. um, for example, banks. Uh -huh. They will save a notification when something is wrong or when the system detects fraud. So we are, we basically, we don't send them notifications when the system is wrong. Uh, we basically have our own teams that when those notifications exist, they need to contact directly the, the customers. Uh, but they need to understand first if the notification is correct or not, and what impact does it have on the, on the, on the service that they are consuming. And then we basically talk with them. Uh, we don't send them directly, uh, because especially as we are trying to be more preventive, um, you basically don't want to reach a system or a situation where you need to notify the customer, uh, but we need to notify them. This is Fitzai that is receiving the exactly. It's it's our teams uh, yeah. that, that receive it. They analyze what sort of notification it is, and if they find this is important, they send it back to the customer. Exactly. And the second question is, do you make a database of the notifications? to uh, give the experience of one bank to all the other so that once again we don't do it we don't show it directly but what we are doing now especially with the initiative is that every day we are tracking uh, what's basically alerting in some of the the systems and as we adjust we roll out to all the customers at the same time um, so we, we take we don't give that visibility but we use that visibility and we fix Imagine if we have the system of one bank um, that we need to tune or alert, then we have a process to roll out this to all of the others. Okay. You have any kind of framework to the developers team so they can bring up all those metrics? Yeah. So we built, uh, I, I wanted to go into those details. Uh, maybe it's topic for a future talk. So we have built a framework uh, based on drop wizard metrics, basically that allows you to export and handles some of the basic uh, structure of monitoring between uh, L checks, uh, histograms, um, and uh, basically exponing it already by JMX and uh, HTTP and so on. So that's the, the base. We built a number of um, metrics that we want to expose. There are generic, generic from Java applications. Okay, uh, between uh, exporting metrics about garbage collection, um, allocation rates, um, memory usage, um, how much are you uh, near that, and uh, file descriptors. It's a known thing about Java applications as well. So basically things that are generic from Java applications, we do it. And then basically we are rolling out uh, guidelines that we know it also that might apply to different teams um, and but basically then the teams need to to, to implement it but the, the framework itself um, it's there and it's basically adopted by all the the products so adding new things it's really really easy um, to to add new monitoring endpoints and, and making sure that we export them to the to the, to the stack they generate events or they generate messages now they basically are exposed, uh, and Telegraph is pulling from there. So the, it's not a push uh, system. The, you, we use Telegraph where it's it's living in every single machine, and it pulls, and then it pushes to 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 Influx. 
Um, the reason for this is that you don't, we don't want, we didn't want to have the applications starting to being blocked, or if you want to adjust the uh, how frequent you want to to collect the the data, um, to be part of the process itself, uh, and then you basically use. It's also a question of abstraction that uh, we we abstracted. So that's uh, telegraph. If we need to change from influx to something else, uh, we just change adapter on on telegraph, and everything is uh, exactly the the same. You said your intention is to make it sort of predictive. Mm -hmm. So have you tried the introduction of any ML techniques into the process? And if you did, what worked best? Like now, we didn't uh, we didn't reach that stage. So we have. Of course, a lot of uh, it's part of our business, and we have uh, dozens of, of data scientists that can uh, help us with that. Right now, we are on the let's say on the beginning, which is a data scientist to work. It needs to have good data, um, and right now we are at that stage where we are collecting as, as much as data as possible, making sure that you get feedback, if the alerts, uh, even th these sim simple things. But for example, we had to re reach out, and we are still working with Ops Genie that. You can't go there and say this is this is this was not really an alert. You can acknowledge, or you can dismiss it, but you cannot say explicitly this was not a problem or this was a problem. Um, and even these basic things, you you need to go one by one to make sure you you get all of, all of these things together. Uh, but that's, I would say, maybe uh, down the line. Right now, with this these improvements, we are being able to predict much more uh, the, the challenges. Um, many banks are developing their software, uh, we are developing their software in Cobol or Fortran, mm -hmm. which are now all languages. Uh, is there some problem for your software to be working with such Machines. No, so uh, especially now with cloud, basically we just expose everything through HTTP. Um, and banks are also uh, adjusting themselves to new technologies. I think there was... Was, was GDPR a concern? Uh, no, because basically we have already a lot of concerns in terms of GDPR because we receive PII, PCI. This is one of the things I, I haven't covered, but one of the reasons why we really need to have an operations team uh, separated from a development team is that just the amount of uh, process and uh, and segregation that you need to do on production for PII and PCI data. PCI is basically if you have credit cards, uh, PII is any uh, personal identifiable information, uh, names, addresses, emails, and so on. For monitoring, we don't basically one thing is we are still on the same environment. We don't push anything out, uh, so we are still in the boundaries uh, that fulfill the most uh, aggressive uh, security restrictions. But also in terms of monitoring, we uh, are not exporting any of that data. In fact, it was one of the reasons why we didn't want to use a service like Datadog or so, is because we wanted to make sure that we wouldn't reach the stage where we wanted to export some information that might not be, uh, not, might, might not be viable. But right now, we don't export any of that. It's purely uh, system or uh, application uh, data and not any type of personal data. Are you also doing any kind of application log analogy? So we have started with basic stuff right now. Uh, even just like having in the dashboard how many errors do you have, how many um, alerts do you have. And the, 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 the focus then is um, and, and we sometimes have some tools, scripted tools, basically just to clean up uh, logs and see what we should be looking for. Um, but right now, we have the infrastructure to build upon that. Um, and we are using logs to generate some of the, some of the charts and some of the information. Um, so now it's mostly a question of adding more, uh, let's say, intelligence to the, to the system. But basically, now it's, it's already there. We have already some of that being extracted, but probably we're focusing on errors that were appearing and are we detecting based on the information on the, on the logs. That part is not yet there, um, but uh, but some other information is already there based on the logs. It's not just a question of the parsers. Last question. 
You can make the yes. topic. Yes, yeah. ask customers ask to look to monitor your cloud services, your cloud servers. Yeah. So especially again with the these banks and but one of them is I've I've done a talk to also uh, which is Lloyd's Bank is is in fact one of the customers that wanted to do that. Uh, so they wanted access to our Grafana's um, and um, they are also implementing their own monitoring on our services, but they have limited access to the system. So they, in fact, they wanted to have access to our monitoring. Um, it's a negotiation, uh, but but in fact, it's it's all it also puts you the pressure to make sure that you are really doing it uh, in the right way. Um, and in fact, these banks nowadays are especially, I would say, our customers, and because they are adopting services of a startup and so on, they're also more open and they they. Um, they understand different ways of working. And uh, it, it, there is a good part on that, which basically keeps you, uh, let's say, on a leash to make things right and and make sure you don't uh, you don't follow wrong priorities. Uh, but yes, they, they have asked that. And they monitor. But mostly, they monitor the business metrics. Uh, everything else, they usually don't, don't monitor. Thank you, guys. Let's wrap up once again. Thank you.